Hello everyone, and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, and welcome to 2019, where today I'm going to be doing an analysis video on the Ninjago Legacy sets that came out like a week and a half ago. Yeah, but I wanted to talk about these sets, and it's probably going to be a good bit before I get my hands on any of them. It'll probably be many months before I get my hands on any of the larger sets, so yeah, I'm just going to give my opinions on them now. But before I begin, I just want to say that while I do have nitpicks about this wave of sets, above and beyond, with the exception of one set I'll get to at the end, every set from this wave, in my opinion, is fantastic. And, again, I might have a few complaints, but this wave is easily the best Ninjago has seen in years. Like, I would hazard to say that this is the best wave of sets we've gotten for Ninjago since... At least since the two waves in 2015. Um, possession and the Tournament of Elements, not in that order. Those were pretty good. And aside from that, I think that... So, so yeah, those two maybe, and then of course the waves we actually got for Seasons 1 and 2, so this is one of the best, not entirely sure where it ranks in there, might even be my personal favorite wave of Ninjago, period, but I'm not going to go that far at the moment. So yeah, let's jump in with the very first set, sorry about that loading screen there, the Samurai Mech, retailing for $15 with 154 pieces and 3 minifigures based off of Season 1, Rise of the Snakes, although here it does feature a pair of Skullkins. Yeah, this is a very cool set. Um, just looking at the mech itself, it has quite a lot of articulation using mini ball joints, specifically at the shoulders, it's hinged at the elbows, ball jointed at the hands, it's ball jointed at the hip, and at the ankle. No knee articulation, but the knees are permanently bent, and um, for playability, aside from that, all that, you can open the cockpit. The, the, the dish piece just folds forward so you can fit Samurai X comfortably inside. And you just have a couple of stud shooters up on top. I mean, for 15 bucks, I think it's pretty cool. Also, in one hand, the mech is gripping a nicely sized, very large sword. And on the other side, we just have a couple of katanas attached as blade weapons. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the katanas, and I kind of wish that maybe on that side, that instead of doing that, they could have given us a more built-up hand instead of just the little clip. I don't know. Anyway, of course, this wave is is all about remakes, so why not show... do... Ugh. So, why not compare each set to the original version, in this case to the 2012 Samurai Mech set? And yeah, this new one is like half the size, but you also have to remember that the old one was $40, and the new one is $15. And yeah, a lot of people have definitely given the new model flack, because it is a lot smaller, and I can definitely see that, but honestly, I think the new one just looks better, and... I, I don't know, I mean, first off, the, the articulation is about the same. In fact, I think it might even be a bit better on the new one now that I think of it. Um, or, well, let's see. Um, Yeah, the old one isn't doesn't have a special joint at the hands, but it does have articulated fingers. And also, um, I don't, I don't recall if at the old one you could bend at the elbows or if it was just a single joint. Not sure about that. But yeah... And so in addition to that, I just think the new one looks cleaner. Like, I know that stuff like the cow catchers for shoulder pads on the old one is pretty memorable and very unique, but I don't know, I never really liked the look of it. I prefer the cleaner new ones. Same thing with the stud guns up top. They look better than a pirate cannon and a lightning gun. And then, the, and then I also just, I hated the dome that the old one had on top because... I, it's been a while since I've watched season one, so I don't remember, but I remember when this set came out, I remember not liking that there was that dome on top, because I didn't recall seeing that in the show, and how in the show you could see the samurai's face through the, um, when she was controlling it, and and that the, the top was shaped like a samurai helmet, and the new one is missing that shaping, but, um... 
but obviously with the size it is, you just have the, of Nia's head sticking up through the top, and it basically creates the same effect. I don't know. Not even sure if that memory's accurate, that's just what I remember. Oh, and also the old set had a little catapult side build, so that's pointless. But yeah, so that's just my thoughts on comparing these two. Moving on to the minifigures, the first one we get here is Samurai X, aka Nia, and this figure is exclusive to this set. Yeah, after these first couple, you're not gonna be hearing me say that very often, since outside of the two smallest sets, there is there are very little exclusive minifigures. Most figures outside of these two are shared. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. This Nia is exclusive for her torso and leg printing, and the torso is covered, but she's printed with the very nice samurai armor in red over dark red with the sort of golden highlights. And underneath on the torso, she actually gets her Phoenix logo printed on, which is very nice. I kind of wish that maybe they could have brought a bit of printing into the Kendo armor, like maybe just had the Phoenix print on the front as well. That would have looked really nice. Still fine, though, and I am glad that LEGO did decide to give us the Kendo armor piece again, this time in red, which I think works very well. The helmet is the same one we got on the original Nia, and the face print is just the one from the $20 Ninjago movie set, which is good, since I, pro since I much prefer that face to the main Ninjago movie face that we also got in sets for seasons 8 and 9, so that's good. The next figure is very controversial. It's the first time we're taking a look at one of the new Skeleton Warrior or Skulkin minifigures, and here we have Cruncha. And, uh, yeah, that new head mold. Let's talk about it. You see, back in 2011, LEGO did two styles of skeletons. They, you had the ones that just used minifigure heads, and then you also had the four generals, each of which had a specially molded head. There was Whiplash, Cruncha, Knuckle, and the leader, Samukai. Now, they all had exclusively molded heads, each with their headgear or whatever molded on onto it. So, for example, Knuckle had his mohawk spikes molded in, Cruncha had his helmet molded in, and, well, I think Whiplash's hat was a separate piece. But anyway, so yeah. For these new sets, however, LEGO decided to create a standardized headpiece that can fit minifigure hair pieces or, and helmets. So, for example, Crunchy here just uses the same helmet we saw on Nia. And I don't mind that. However, the head here is really small. And yeah, that is a bit odd, but honestly, I don't mind it that much. It's alright. What I mind a bit more is some of the other issues on this figure, like a where's his boots? Like, I mean, Lego, I get that, like, it's annoying how he doesn't have the awesome old skeleton shoulder armor, either the main one or the special one that was made just for Cruncha, and also Whiplash, I think. See, so, yeah, that's annoying, but honestly, it's not a huge thing to me, because with the way the new heads are done, they couldn't have fit that on there. Yeah, what annoys me, though, is, like, there is no reason why he can't use the Skulkin boot pieces. Like, they should still be in Lego's inventory, like, I... N like, they still had them last year for Nex for the Nexonite sets. So, like, where are those? What, 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 were they just lazy? Are those pieces too expensive now? Why can't we give the skeletons boots? Just a weird thing. Oh, and also, you have the, um, the red belt printed for Cruncha, as you can see a bit of it, which is not accurate. Cruncha always had a gray or black belt, Samukai and Frakja were the only Skulkins with red belts. But yeah, they did remove the nails and crack printing on the torso, which I actually like. I did not like that detail, so it's good to see it removed, in my opinion. Um, oh, and then also, the head print is exclusive, as Cruncha has a missing tooth and a scar on, on his chin, which is nice. Although I do kind of wish that maybe for the eyes, instead of just having them be red with a gaping black hole in the middle, maybe they could have brought a bit of white in there to make it seem a bit more alive. I don't know. One last thing is that they do have a new kind of shoulder armor piece in black, which I believe is exclusive to this set in black, but for some reason it's not in this picture, so I can't show it. Next figure is Knuckle, and, uh, oh, I guess I was wrong, because if you look at it, you can see that he actually does still have the printing on the top of the torso. Joy. 
I mean, I don't really have much else to say with this guy that I haven't already said with Cruncha. Um, this time the belt's in blue, which is accurate. And, uh, oof, that, uh, that mohawk, though. Instead of just having a couple of little spikes, he has a full-on mohawk, and boy, is it strange. Yeah. The less we say about that, the better. Oh, and then he does get an exclusive face print with the scar over his eye with the metal plate. So that's nice. So yeah, that is the new Samurai Mech set. Overall, I think it is a pretty nice playset for 15 bucks. It's definitely one I want to pick up. Figures are a mixed bag. The new Nia's great. The Skeletons, not so much. But the Mech's good. Yeah. The next set we have here is the Golden Dragon with 171 pieces and three minifigures for $20. And this set is, of course, based off of Season 2 of Ninjago, and it would really help if these loading screens could stop it and just... I mean, I'm sorry, the program I'm using to show all these images is not cooperating. It took a while to get this set up, which, which is why, you know, it took so long for me to get this video out. And even then, it's it's taking forever to load. Yeah. So, just taking a look at the dragon and ignoring the figures, this is a really unique design for the golden dragon. Um, starting off with the thing that instantly caught my eye when LEGO revealed this set. The molded head. You see, back in 2011 and 2012, all the LEGO Ninjago dragons used two-piece molded rubber heads that, that went on the both, and in between them was a little ball shooter. So you could push down on the jaw and it would shoot out an energy ball. LEGO phased that out starting in 2014, and since then every LEGO Ninjago Dragon has had a brick-built head. Including the Ultra Dragon later in this wave, but for some reason with the Golden Dragon they decided to bring back the molded head. Except bringing back isn't the right word, because this is a br two brand new molded pieces for the head. And, uh, yeah, not really sure how to feel about this. Like, it does look nice, but it also is a bit inconsistent. Although, then again, considering how the Golden Dragon is just an energy dragon, like, almost more of, like, a move than, than anything else, I guess it's not too inconsistent, since, of course, it's not a living dragon. And also, the head here looks so much better than the 2013 one, though. Like, this one, actually, you get printing for the teeth, which is important. Also, the head shape here is right, instead of being the, um, the old, the old, old one, I think, used the coal dragon head mold, which was just wrong. But, and then there's a stud shooter in the mouth, which is a cool replacement for the energy shooter. Other than that, you have articulation at the shoulders, at the wings at the claws, and several points along the tail, and you can sit Lloyd here. Oh, and there's also some in the legs. And there's brick-built feet, which looks alright. Yeah, cool beans. Okay, th this is getting annoying. Comparing this to the 2013 version, yeah, the new one is smaller, but it's not that much smaller. Like, I can excuse this. This. Like, and obviously I can't excuse it, like, even with the Samurai Mech, I thought it was pretty good, but, like, I, I'm pretty sure that most people, even if they thought the Samurai Mech was too small, I think most people could see this as being fine. Yeah, I mean, like, and the old one also got a little dirky side build, but yeah, just my opinion, but I prefer the new one. Also, I'm pretty sure the new one, again, has more articulation than the old one, so that's just kind of embarrassing. And the new one definitely doesn't have those awful molded feet that I hated. See, so yeah, and that's good. Moving on to figures, the first one we get here is Golden Ninja Lloyd, and this is the only way to get a Golden Ninja at the moment. This is the first time LEGO's made the Golden Ninja Lloyd available since 2016 with a LEGO Dimensions set. And he looks pretty good. He has, This is the first time we're getting to take a look at the new Ninja wraps, which are kind of similar to the ones we saw for Possession and Skybound, and also, I think, Hands of Time, that um, are double-molded. The main difference here being that now the ties actually go much farther down the back of the torso, which is good and bad. Good in that I think it looks nice, but bad in that you can't attach any of, like, you can't use the ZX armor or the Skybound shoulder pads with these figures. 
which is annoying. Anyway, Lloyd gets a double-sided face that I couldn't really find a good picture of, but on one side he's frowning, and on the other side he's really angry, which I like. Also, I think the gr the green eyes kind of work here. Like, I don't, like, in general, I'm not a fan of the green eyes, but I think they work for this golden version. Um, the torso is pretty similar to the old one, except now we're, a couple of straps are replaced by dragon insignias, which are all right. Legs are pretty similar. Yeah, his accessory is a golden katana. Pretty cool figure. But the pretty cool figure is nothing compared to what I consider to be the what, the absolute best figure of Ninjago Legacy and one of the best minifigures, period. The Overlord, who might just be reappearing in Season 10 of Ninjago, but, but I'm not positive about that, just going off of the trailer. Anyway, though, this guy looks fantastic. Starting at the bottom, he has the, um... The ghost tail piece that was used in Skybound and Possession, and most recently was used for the Harry Potter Dementor. Here we have it molded in trans purple and black, which creates a very cool overlordy feel. And then continue the design up into the torso, where there's just very simple purple printing to give it that sort of gaseous look. Then he has the the Ninjago movie forearms attachment with the um with some very great golden and pink printing that just looks so good. The head is trans-purple with some pink printing. His face is super scary, like with those angry eyes and the just jagged teeth. The helmet's great. Yeah, this guy's fantastic. Phenomenal minifigure. Last figure we get here is the Stone Scout, who just has a crossbow and quiver. Torso print and face print are not exclusive at None of the parts of this guy are exclusive, um, although technically this figure in itself is exclusive because it is very similar to a Skatone Scout in a later set, except, or well, th that one has a different face, but this face also comes in that same set on a different Stone Warrior. But yeah, the, the, only, di the only thing that makes this guy unique is that he has the different face that's also in that other set, but on a different figure, and you also get short legs instead of normal printed legs. So yeah, and that's the Golden Dragon, another set I definitely plan on picking up, and in fact, this is probably going to be the first set from this wave I get. But yeah, really awesome. Moving on to a set that is pretty cool, but probably a bit of a downgrade, we have Kai's Blade Cycle and Zane's Snowmobile, with 376 pieces and 4 minifigures for $30. And that is a pretty good price to part ratio. The only question is, is the set worth that much? Eh, yeah, we'll see. The first build we get here is of Kai's Blade Cycle, which, uh, I think looks alright. It's very sleek this time around, and, um, I like some details. Like, I think the stickers for the fire look really nice, as well as the, um, how the all the katanas are attached. Not a big fan of the black stripe in the middle, though. But, yeah, I mean, you see those little Technic pieces coming off the sides? Those are levers, and when you push them in, boom! The scissor function, all the blades split out on the front and back, which just looks fantastic, because... Something I never liked about the old blade cycle is that you push down the function and you have two little swords that like pop out a f like maybe a centimeter if you're lucky. So I just think this is much better than that for the blade function. Comparing this to the old one, yeah, I feel as though the new one is prob is a more generic cycle and it loses and while it does look good, it I think it loses a lot of the stuff that made the old blade cycle unique. Like, the old one at, at the, the front was very high, which made it look very aggressive, and the new one is just missing that. And also, while I did say that I liked the fire stickers on the new one, I feel as though they, like, I guess that they fit more with the modern aesthetic of Kai, but I really do prefer the old ones. And also, Kai's dragon insignia is just completely missing on the new one. As well as that detail with, like, the snakes ik, tallies crossed out, which was just something I loved, and that's gone. Yeah, this one just looks much less aggressive, and again, this one has the black in the middle, which it just doesn't scream Blade Cycle. I much prefer just the fully red, just in-your-face design of the old one. 
Eh, those are just my thoughts, though. The other build we get here is Zane's Snowmobile, which looks really good. You can see that there's just the one wheel in the back, but um, I be but there are also I also some other pieces that help this glide around. I think I believe there are some wheels underneath. I I believe maybe like a cheater wheel, not positive though. But um, at the front you have the skid which can rotate it to help you steer, which is good. And the feature here is that you have those little sub assemblies. You can see the white clip piece on the side, and well, you can attach the shuriken to that. And if you push down on that assembly, it'll fire out a stud from the stud gun. Also, one little detail I really like is how, for detail on the sides, they used the Season 9 Dragon Sword Hilt. That's just the nice dragon head. I really like that piece, and I'm glad to see it being used. And it's actually used quite a bit in this wave, which is cool, since I really like that piece. Comparing this to the old snowmobile, it's really no contest. The new one is better. I don't even really have to say anything. Um... If, I mean, to be fair, the shaping, I feel as though, you could complain about how the shaping is less aerodynamic than the old one, but I prefer it. I, th I mean, if I had one complaint, is that I really did like how on the old one you did have the nice crystally pieces, like the rock pieces, but they're cast in that nice trans light blue. I feel so maybe they could have brought that back in, at least for the seat rest in the back, but... And that's my only complaint. The stickers are so much better on the new one. No idea why the old one used purple. But yeah. Other builds. You get a little serpent shrine that can hold the sword of fire. And I like the couple of purple snakes. You have a box of dynamite. You have a street lamp with a chain. And then you have that little assembly all off to the left. Which is, bit, which is a little thing for spinjitsu. So what you do is you have those four studs. You stand a figure there. And there's a little tire underneath of it, eighth of the four studs, and you just roll that on the ground and the figure spins. Pretty nifty. Moving into the figures, the first one we get here is Kai, who is very common in this wave. He comes in, I want to say, like, five or s five? Yeah, I want to say five sets, which is quite excessive. But it is a nice figure. He again uses the new molt cowl mold, this time in red it with a dark red highlight. He has the same Ninjaga movie face. I really like the torso printing, though. I don't know why. I, I, I think it has a very DX look to it, which I really like. The DX suits were some of my favorites, not my absolute favorites. That just goes to ZX because of nostalgia, and the Deep Stone suits because they were awesome, but DX is probably a close third. And this suit really does evoke that for me. I, I really like it. Oh, and then the Dragon Sword of Fire is actually something I forgot to mention earlier, is that for this wave, LEGO's Collect Them All gimmick that they always do with Ninjago sets is that um, you're, you're trying to collect all four golden weapons, but the problem is that like none of them have anything exclusive to them. Like This is the same Dragon Sword that's been in sets since 2011, and I know it hasn't been too common recently. In fact... I don't, now that I think of it, I don't know if it's been in a set since um, since the Kai Dimensions pack in 2015, but still, it seems a bit lazy to me, and I feel so maybe they could have done something new with it, like, maybe they could have done a new mold that has it double molded, so you also have some trans orange in there to make it fiery, I don't know, just a thought, but I think that could have looked really cool. Next figure is Zane, who definitely is le- I don't like as much as Kai- I don't know, for some reason he really reminds me of the Ninjago movie aesthetic for Zane, which I despised. Yeah, I mean, like, Mask has white and uh, light gray, which I don't think is a good accent. I kind of wish they'd gone with a very light blue instead, maybe? Maybe just have the accent be gold, like it was on the ZX. I don't know, just don't like the light gray. Torso print is... Uh, it's the main thing that's not making me like this figure, I think, and the legs are alright, though. Torso do torso is good, I just, it's not, I don't like it personally. Shuriken's Vice, again, are just the same one since 2011. Thanks, LEGO, very original. Our next figure, though, is pretty good. If, the only problem being that it's used a bit too much. This figure is Spitta, who is one of the Venomari from Season 
one, and he looks pretty good. This is a new figure with new torso and leg printing, which I don't like as much as the old one, but it still looks pretty good, and I could see people preferring this. This Here he has a more humanoid look to his prints. The head is exactly the same as the old one, though, so that's nice. And then he has a nice scythe. And here we have Ratla, who has the same head mold and printing, or, well, not mold, but the, um, the hood mold for the Cobra hood, same one that we had in 2012. The face print is new, though. Torso and legs are new. Legs are the same as Spitta, actually, but, yeah, and he has a little dagger. The thing, though, is with these Venomari, first off, they're the only tribe of Serpentine we get in this wave, well, outside of Anacondri, I guess, but that's just Pythor. And I feel as though that's a bit lazy, especially considering how, like, Spitta you also, you get in another set, and then Lasha you get in two other sets. And, like, my first thought with this is that you could kind of justify it by saying that maybe they didn't want to bring back any more Serpent Molds, but, like, you could still at least make Ratla and Mesmo of the, of the, um, the Hypnobri using these same parts. So I don't know why they didn't do that. It just seems a bit lazy. Especially considering how when LEGO did Junior's sets for Ninjago, and I want to say 2016, they, um, they also just used the Venomari. We got Lasha, and then also just a random guy who used the Anacondri head mold. And I, I just didn't understand. And I guess if you want to get technical, um, if I, I believe that um, Clancy from Skybound would also be a Venomari, at least judging by his color. So yeah, just, I don't really get wh why LEGO is giving us Venomari in this wave. Like, in my opinion, they're probably the least memorable tribe. I don't know. I mean, they're good figures, just feel as though LEGO used them too much. But that doesn't really harm this set in particular, unless you're getting other sets. And yeah, overall, I'd say this is a pretty good set. I'm not sure if I'll be picking it up. It's probably appeals the least to me out of all the sort of remake sets, but it's all right. Good deal. Next set is Jay's Stormfighter with 490 pieces and four minifigures for $40. Yeah. For the main build of the Stormfighter, you have this very large jet that is, unlike some of the other sets, like the two smallest ones, this is a large upscale. This version of the Stormfighter is much larger than the old one. And I think it looks much better as well. You can see that it does have some very recognizable things, like the spinner crowns on the back. And the cockpit is the same, but this one is much larger, with the fins on the back look better. And thank God, you can see on the little flaps that it brings back Jay's classic octopus insignia. Or, well, Stormcloud, whatever, I always thought it was an octopus for some reason. Anyway, instead of the Ninjago movie ones, so that's great. You have the um, the wing the little wing golden pieces coming forwards on the sides of the wings, which I really like. Yeah. And you can also see a couple of spring shooters under the wings. And the main plea feature is you see that gray wheel piece in the middle, you push that forward, and the wings fold out, which I think is pretty cool. They well they fold back and you have the blades, and I really like that. That's a good feature. Good stuff. Comparing this to the old one, is it, it... This isn't fair. I mean, first off, I mean, to be fair, you could say that the new one isn't worth $40 because it isn't that much bigger than the old one, but I think it's an improvement just based on detail alone because this looks really good and the old one just didn't. I mean, the old one had a weird dip in the middle and then the wings were just so lame. Like, I mean, look at that. They barely come out the sides at all, and you just have those derpy blades. Oh, and then just fold it open, like, again. It just looks so much better. Like, on the old one, when you had it folded open, it's just a four wide the whole way. It looks boring. And the blades have no real oomph to them. Here, the blades are nice and jagged. Really looks, really th makes you think of, a, of arcing electricity. Much more than the awful that antenna used in the lightning jet from the Ninjago movie. God, I hate the lightning jet. Easily the worst set ever. The lightning jet is the worst thing LEGO's ever done. 
Anyway, our other build is just this little serpent trine, per similar to the one in the last set, but now it holds the Chucks of Lightning, which you can see again are nothing new, but at least it's a new design where you have the golden chain with the, um, with the two dragon heads. And even if LEGO felt like you, felt like they didn't want to do the propo the thing I proposed where they brought in the transparency to the other weapons, they should have at least done it here. Because, watch the show, the nunchucks of lightning do not have a golden chain. The chain is not a chain, it's a bolt, it's arcing lightning between the two handles. So they should have at least given us a transparent blue chain piece here. So that's kind of a of problem. First figure is Jay, who is kind of a mixed bag for me. I like him not as much as Kai, but definitely more than Zane. Face print is same as from the Ninjago movie. Hood piece works, torso works, yeah. Not much else to say, he exists. Next figure is Nia, who is uh, one I really like. She reminds me a lot of her Season 5 design, and I'm glad that LEGO has gone back to this color scheme for Nia, even though it is a bit annoying how they keep flip-flopping, like first we had the this, the red and azure, then we had black and dark red, then we got um, gunmetal and light blue. Then we got just plain gunmetal. Then we went back to gunmetal and it. Did I say light blue? I meant azure. And now we're back here at the original. So it would be nice if LEGO could make up their minds, but this looks pretty nice. It definitely reminds me of, yeah, that original one, but I like it more. I really like the torso design. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing of real note to me here. Oh, and also the cowl is nice again. Then we have Pythor P. Chumsworth himself, who looks phenomenal in my opinion. Mediocre design for the staff. I would have preferred if we, or if they'd actually given him the golden snake staff piece, and we finally could have gotten the Anacondra the insignia in the middle of it for Pythor's staff. But um, aside from that, I think this guy looks really good. I really like the gold accents and the gem on top. It really makes him look like the Serpent King, which, of course, he is. And it's great to finally get another purple Pythor, since, of course, in Rebooted, he got bleached white. So that was just a thing that ex that happened. But yeah, this guy looks pretty good. And then we have Lasha. Literally the same figure. He even has the same weapon as in the last set. And, like, again, why not make this guy Ratla? I mean, like, the set includes Pythor, and when I think of Pythor, I, I always think of, since he didn't really have a tribe of his own, I always think of the Hypnobri, because his second-in-command was Scales. So, like, just include Ratla, or Mesmo, or, or if it wouldn't be too hard, why not bring back the, the, the main Hypnobri head mold and just give us a new version of Scales? You, you know how much I want a Scales figure? I mean, aside from Pythor, Scales is easily the most memorable Serpent General. I feel as though they should have splurged and given us a Scales figure. I don't know. Just my thought. Just my two cents. But yeah, that's the set. Again, much like the last set, it's very good, but it's a pretty good set overall, but I'm not positive if it's going to be one I'm going to immediately pick up. I'm probably going to wait a while on this, but I do plan to get it. Even if no, none of the figures are exclusive. And I forgot to mention with the last set, neither of these, neither of these sets have any exclusive minifigures. None at all. Not, no, no special prints, nothing. Yeah. But yeah, still pretty good set. But you know what's better than pretty good? Absolutely phenomenal, which is what I consider to be the absolute best legacy set. Cole's Earth Driller, based off of the final battle arc of Season 2. This set comes with 587 pieces, four minifigures, one big boy, and it retails for about um, $50 in the United States. I think I might have already said that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, this set is pretty cool, and let's start off with what I think is pretty awesome, but not the absolute best part of this set, the Earth Driller, which looks so good. The cockpit is really accurate to the show, and it's printed, which is great. Very few, in fact, I don't think there are any stickers on the outside of this, although there are some inside. You have a couple stud shooters on the side. Of course, as you turn the, the model, 
as you push it along, the drill turns. And if you turn the engine in the back, the drill will turn without the model rolling, which is a nice touch. And you just have a lot of great mechanical detail with the engines on the front. You have some great rocky detail on the sides. In the front, you have the rubber wheels, and in the back, the chunky ones. But I, but I think it works very well, and from what I've seen, the set does roll along very well. Yeah. Comparing this to the old one, I mean, is it really a contest? Like, even more so than the Stormfighter, like, the old one was a $20 set, and while this is a $50 set, you have to keep in mind that, like, it's not the, m it's not the only thing in the set, so I'd imagine that this Earth Driller is probably, like, $30 to $35. But still, there is nothing the old one does better. The old one had an inaccurate cockpit with one figure, the new one has an accurate cockpit with too many figures. The old one just had some flat rock dealing detailing that's just attached directly to the side and then a sticker. This one has very nice, um, organic looking rock detailing. The wheels look better. The engine detailing's better. The new one is just better. However, um, I think the thing that I like the most about this set is, um, this big boy. Yeah, it's, um, it's the giant stone warrior. A fa a k something I've wanted in LEGO since the day episode 20 aired back in 2012. And it's finally here! And this guy looks so good. He uses the giant man, um, Ares type build that we've been getting for the past couple of years for these larger minifigures, which works great here. Really wish LEGO did these more often, but I think this is the best one we've gotten in a while, and I don't see LEGO upstaging this anytime soon, so I'm good with this. Well, there was also that really great Santa Claus one that was the promotional gift I'm never going to be able to get my hands on. But I still think this one works a bit better. For articulation, the head can turn, all four arms are ball jointed, and the hands can move back and forth on a single axis, and the legs can move back and forth. All the detailing is stickered, except for the face, which is printed. The helmet, I think, is a fantastic build. The bat wings used on the sides works really well, as well as the design for the ornament, for the sort of um, ornament up top. Not an ornament at all, but I can't think of what you call it, the red bit. He has two swords. Yeah, really great looking guy. They really emulated the look of how the figure parts look with the helmet and the, f and the extra arm attachment. He looks great. And, well, I guess technically we did get this guy before in the Cryptarium Prison set, and, uh, yeah. Just, uh, j just, yeah. D do I really have to say why the new one is better? Do I really have to? Yeah, um, for figures, the first one we get is coal, and this is actually the cheapest way to get coal. Coal only comes in this set and the monastery, so he's not common, which for some reason is a regular with coal. I don't know why coal is so hard to come by. <coughs> Sorry, but I mean, yeah, like, for example, just going back in Season 9, he was only in the $70 set and the Giant set. In Season 8, he was only in the, um... The, uh, the big, the main set, the Resurrection Temple. In the, uh, in the Ninjago movie, he was... Well, all of the ninja there were relatively cheap, but he was in a $30 set, which was actually more than what the cheapest set for the rest of them was, if I remember correctly, or, or the same price for, like, J as well, I think. And yeah, it's just weird to me how Cole is strangely uncommon, and, like, even in waves where he's really cheap, like, he was the least common ninja in the movie, he was the least common in Hands of Time, like, Cole is just scarce for some reason. But I think this is a good look for him. I really like the dark brown accents. Yeah, scythe build is also great, not much else to say. Kai is literally the same as the other set, but then this stone warrior is pretty cool. You can see that this is the one that uses the face print of the scout from the golden dragon set, but this guy looks really good. He has the helmet, and um, the torso is the same as the scout. The legs are the same as the swordsman we get in this set, but this guy just has a couple of red katanas. And the new shoulder armor piece is the same one that we're getting for Cruncha and Knuckle, except on them it's in black. Yeah, nice figure. Last one we get here is the Stone Swordsman, 
or technically, for some reason, Lego is calling this a stone scout, even though swords, even though if it, uh, even though the ones with long legs were swordsmen, but this guy gets a crossbow, so I guess he's a scout. And he has the yellow face that Lego did use for the scouts, so I don't know. Oh, and I forgot to mention on the other two stone warriors we get in this wave, they have the green face paint, which is new since the old sets came with red, blue, and yellow, and Day of the Departed just came with red. So yeah, cool stuff. This guy does just come with the yellow again, but I but it is a new print for the yellow. It's very similar to the old one, but it is new, if I'm correct. So yeah, that's nice, and this set is nice. Again, I would say that it's easily the best set for Legacy. Is it Now again, it's probably going to be a bit before I pick this set up, since $50, I mean, right after Christmas, and especially considering how much stuff I have from Christmas that I still have yet to get to, it's going to be a bit, but this set's fantastic. It's worth the wait. Another set that is absolutely fantastic is the largest set from this wave, but not the most expensive, the 1,070-piece Monastery of Spinjitsu, which is $80 for the piece count I already mentioned, and eight minifigures. And yeah, this set is fantastic. Starting with the back, you have several little functions that I have pointed out with these helpful arrows. This is supposed to represent the, um, the back wall of the monastery, and obviously through the door would be the interior. This set doesn't get an interior, but I think that's fine, since this is designed for training in the monastery. And um, for features, you can see that in the center you have this nice tower, and the light blue arrow is pointing to the lower window there, and there there's a little clip where you can place the shurikens of ice. The red arrow is pointing to the left node, where you have a section. You can see the little green samurai helmet ornament, and on the back of that piece is the dragon sword of fire, and that can rotate around. And you can see the gear with the sword attached to it, and what that does is when you turn the sword, and therefore the gear, it turns around the piece to reveal the dragon sword. Alternatively, if Alternatively, you could turn the dragon sword as a lever, which would turn the sword, and you could use that to knock down a figure. The brown arrow points to the the um the right node, where you have a holding section for the nunchucks of lightning and the scythe of quakes, and if you push down on that section, you see a little plate jutting out. It'll burst open the windows and launch out a golden chicken, which is pretty cool. In the center, you have the stairs, which can just be pushed out, and you can s turn a gear to swing a knife up. Pretty cool stuff. Other than that, the only real notable detailing uh, for the ground layer is that you have Wu's tea set with a couple of tea cups. Bit lame how those are in white and not in light blue, but it's fine. And then I think the roof design is very good. Not much else to say beyond that. For the front section, though, you have this nice entrance with a very simple wall, some lanterns out front, and some rocky detailing. The door is well done and accurate, and up front you have the nice dojo pagoda design. And on the side you have a little cherry tree. Cherry blossom tree, rather. And while I can't see all of it, you can see that on the insides you have painted murals, which are from Legacy, so that's good. And on the two we can see... On the left one, on the 1x2x5 piece, you have Master Chen and the Anaconda. And on the right on that large panel, you have um, a couple different scenes. You have the Great Devourer being attacked by Garmadon. And, and with the Tornado of Creation against it. And up top, you have the Golden Dragon versus the Overlord. Comparing these two comparing the design for the monastery to the old set monastery will not um, i think the old set was called spinjitsu training but i might be wrong about that whatever it was called the old set it was fifty dollars the new set is eighty dollars the old set was about the same size in fact the it was a bit larger but it only included the back section and wasn't accurate to the show well the new one includes a front section and a back section although no side sections and it's just very accurate and looks great. For side builds, you have 
um, you have a couple of just things to train with. On the left, you have this thing where you we have a sword, and if you knock that over, it'll push up a little sign with an exclamation point on it. And you also just have a couple of fruit. Then you have a little spinning dummy with a couple of scythes attached to it. And then you also have two of those little spinjitsu apparatuses I mentioned earlier. Apparatuses? Apparat I'm going with apparatuses. For minifigures, the first one is Master Wu, and this is the cheapest set to include Master Wu, though he does come in a spinner, as does Cole. I forgot to mention, like, if I, like, I think I mentioned how some of, how Cole is more expensive. Um, that's a lie. He comes in a $10 spinner. Wu comes in a $20 spinner dual pack. But yeah, torso and legs are based on the Season 1 figure with the black kimono. And then the face print is the same one from the Ninjago movie, Destiny's Bounty, which is cool since that was a much less common print, and I like it a lot more than the cheaper set, so that is a very good print to get. Then we have Zayn, Cole, Kai, Jay, Nia, and then, hey, Lloyd, he's new, and again, Lloyd does come in a $20 spinner, but again, this is the cheapest set to include Lloyd in a, the green ninja suit. In fact, Wu and Lloyd actually come in the same two sets. So just this and then the most expensive set we'll get to in a minute. Lloyd, I feel, is kind of in the middle. I uh, I like the um the green and in for the I like the green design and then the dark green on the hood. I like the goat dragon. So yeah, I don't know. There's just something about him I don't like. It might be the green eyes, which is something I still don't like. Maybe, or maybe it's the fact that I know he's going to have that horrible Ninjago movie face. Like, seriously, Lego, like, oh, no one likes the Lloyd face from the Ninjago movie. Just give us something good. Or maybe the thing that's bothering me is the fact that in the one episode that, that takes pl that, that's a flashback in Legacy that takes place, like, during, after season two... That, that has the the Ultra Dragon in it. Lloyd is voiced by Sam Vincent and has his new design, even though it was season two, so he should be voiced by Jillian Michaels. Sorry about that, but, like, that just annoys me. But, yeah, the only actually exclusive figure we get here is Whiplash, who I'd say probably fared the best of the new Skulkins, because he was always supposed to have a bit of a smaller head than the others, so he didn't look weird because he used the Sensei Wu hat mold, and he still does, and he looks pretty good. Same blue belt as Knuckle, even though that's not accurate because Whiplash had the white belt, and his accessory is just a little dagger. Oh, and here you can see the black shoulder armor in action. So yeah, that's the Monastery of Spinjitsu, a phenomenal set, definitely another one I plan on picking up as soon as possible. You could say that it's a bit lacking in play features, as you really only get the three main ones I mentioned earlier, as well as a couple of little dummies, but I think it's pretty good. It's great to get all six Ninja and Master Wu, although maybe if I had one complaint, it's that I feel as though maybe they could have given us one more villain figure. Like, we just get this one skeleton whiplash, like... Obviously, the one I really wanted to get that I'm sad isn't here is Samu Kai, because first they skipped him in Day of the Departed, and then they skipped him here. Like, it, I, it's, like, Samu Kai isn't an easy figure to come by. I would real, I really want a new Samu Kai. Although, then again, I get that that would require them dredging up a couple new molds, or, well, old molds that they would have to bring back, so I don't know. But honestly, maybe they could have just thrown in one of the Skullkins that used just the minifigure head, like Chopov, or Crazy, or Frackjaw, or Boneseye. Either those old Skullkins had some pretty great names. But yeah, great set. The last set, aside from the, aside from the spinners, some polybags, and a piece of garbage is the Ultra Dragon, with 951 pieces and 6 minifigures for $85, making this the most expensive set from Legacy. And yeah, you have some pretty great stuff here, although of course the main focus here is the Ultra Dragon, which I think looks fantastic. First off, you have the four heads, which are very well done, 
you have they're all brick built and they all have stud shooters on the sides the they all have opening jaws some a sticker on top of each head but but they do all have some unique per, brick built things to make them different from the others like the fire dragon has fire on the sides the ice dragon has ice blades the lightning dragon has lightning bolts and the earth one has rock detailing and they also all get printed eyes which is very nice now they're not all all now, you don't get eight new prints, but you get four because you get a new print for the left eye and the right eye for the fire and lightning dragons, as well as a different print for the left eye and the right eye of the wind and of the wind, the earth and ice dragons. But yeah, um, you have that of a very nice throne to sit your figure in. Very ornate. The wings are fabric. For features, the legs do not articulate at all, which a lot of people don't like, but I don't really mind, because, like, you're not going to have this thing running. You're going to have it flying, or you're going to have it standing. And for flying, it works very well, because it just has that little handle in the back, and um, basically what happens is the whole back half of the model hinges, so you can just move the entire back half of the model up and down, and that'll flap the wings, which is cool. Oh, and the tail can swing. Comparing this to the old one, is it really a contest? I mean, yeah, you could say that the old one is more brick-built, but, like, the heads on the new one look so much better, and they have room, and next, the old one just had four heads that were crowded together. Not to mention that, for some insane reason on the old one, only two heads got the, um, got the ball shooters in them, and only one energy ball was included. And also on the old one, the, the seating didn't look good, the wings were awful, it was mostly Technic. Yeah, wasn't a big fan of the old one. The, um, the Great Devourer was actually my favorite part of the old set. And I did have the old set, but now it is parted out and some of the pieces are missing. So, yeah, unfortunate. But it is good to get this new one. Kind of sad that we're not getting a new version of the Great Devourer, although then again... I would prefer just not getting one to what I think LEGO would have done, where it would have been really small and underwhelming, like the Basilisk in the Great and the Harry Potter Great Hall. Yeah. The side build we do get for this set, though, is a little turret. It has some snakes, it has a couple of spring shooters. Yeah, it's mediocre. Kind of would have preferred if instead of this they'd given us... Well, maybe not instead of this, but I kind of would have liked if maybe they could have added a bit to this to give us maybe a bit of wall... You know, give us a little bit of feeling for the lost city of Ouroboros. I don't know. For figures, we get Laloid, we get Master Wu, then we have Garmadon. And Garmadon, this is the only set to include him, but he's not exclusive since he also comes in a spinner set. But he looks pretty good. He, thank God, Legos reverted him back to his season 1 and 2, and also, well, only the first two seasons. That design... Because he looks really good here. New face print. The um the old gunmetal armor piece. And I believe the torso printing and leg printing are new. But they might as well just be the old ones. Because they look the same to me. But he does have back printing now. Which is nice. Then we have Pythor P. Chumsworth. This time with a fang blade. And there's just a red stud on the bottom. But that I doubt will have any printing. I doubt Lego like, will print the fang pyre insignia on it. Especially since that would be kind of odd, since we don't get any fang pyre and we don't get any other fang blades. So it's just a bit strange to me. I don't know. Again, would have preferred if he had his staff, but this is alright. Then we get Lasha. And then we get Spitta. And oh boy, boy, do I love these guys. Definitely wouldn't rather have had any other figures besides them. But yeah, that, this is a pretty fantastic set. If I had any complaints, it's, it's that there are no exclusive figures... So that's just a bit of a downside, in my opinion. Again, would have been nice to maybe get a couple different snakes. Maybe we could have gotten some some Hypnobri. That's just something I want. I want Hypnobri, Lego. Why can't we have new Hypnobri? I don't know. And also maybe just one more ninja. I don't know. Maybe... Oh, here's an idea. Maybe they could have included Samurai X in this. Although, no, that would have made that figure not exclusive. But, like, that's a $10 set that already has two exclusive minifigures. So, so I think making... Or, well, already has three. So, I think taking away one to make two exclusives wouldn't have been too bad. I don't know. I feel so this set could have done with just one more figure. 
I don't know. Moving on to the absolute worst set, since the Lightning Jet, well, maybe not that bad, but, like, it, it's less bad and more just annoying. Here we have Monastery Training, set number 70680. Now, you might not remember, but back when these sets were first being rumored, that was the set number for the rumored Fire Temple set. Do you remember that? Do you remember how, how it was rumored that we were going to be getting a new version of the Fire Temple? A Ninjago set that I so wanted. I wanted it so bad when I, I was younger and was first getting into the show. But guess what? I never was able to get it. I never got the Fire Temple, and I never will. And now I can't, and now they're not doing a new one. And instead, we're getting this $10 set that, uh, uh well, let's see. Do, do you see what the build is? Yeah, it's literally just Spinjitsu training from the Ninjago movie. Like, I mean, the build is is nearly identical. Like, yeah, now I have a punching bag instead of a lantern. Great, that changes it so much. And then, like, the dummies here look worse than in the old one. I mean, and then you just have that little spinny bit. I mean, the, the only thing really of worth in this whole set is that is that it's the cheapest way to get that red kendo armor by $5. What a steal. So we get Kai. And, I, oh, I lied. The best part of this is that you get a whole set of those new weapon pieces that were introduced in Season 9 in gold. And I, th and I think this is by far the cheapest way to get those pieces in gold. Maybe the cheapest way to get them, period. So that's really nice. You can see Kai with the short katanas, which are great. Nia has this little bladed weapon, which is great, and oh boy, oh boy, again, so glad to get Nia. I mean, sure, she's in a set five dollars more than this in a much better incarnation, but sure, this is a figure. I mean, would have been nice if maybe instead of giving us this, like, if they want to do a training set, why not base it off of, like, the old training sets, like, for a $10 set, why not, why not give us, like, a new version of the Ninja Training Outpost, or the Jungle Ambush, or the Venomari Shrine? Just ideas. I mean, hey, Lego, Venomari's in the title. You could, you could put Lasha in that set, and it wouldn't...